keynote speaker and uh, dr krishnamurthy will be able to introduce you in later i also welcome professor krishna krishku am i able to hear you professor krishku hello professor chris hello professor chris sir our idhar hai but i is unable to okay i welcome him to this particular program i hand over the mic to professor krishnamurthy am to introduce the the honorable guest the speaker as well as the keynote speaker mr krishnamurthy good morning to everyone from karnataka state library association uh friends today we have a international uh, series uh the title of the series is new direction for library and information science service and education uh actually i was going through a article uh, in the research record uh, there was a article title uh, written by gerald w lundgren uh, the editor of the column Uh, the title is new direction for library and information science education it was a very interesting article uh, for the academician Acro approximately one year ago uh, the research center inc was awarded a contract to identify describe and validate both current and future competency requirements of information professional actually the project is concerned with information professionals working in a variety of different environments including libraries information centers and the clearing houses database producers database distributors museums archives information analysis centers brokers jobbers like that etc etc but one particular aspect of the project is to identify the newly emerging analysis centers one particular aspect is working environment within which information professionals are found for example we have identified a trend largely in scientific and technically information settings for information professionals performing traditional reference type function to be distributed throughout the organization as members of scientific or technical project groups rather than to be affiliated with a central library or information service like that this project has identify the what are the problem in the lis education and the services what are the new directions and as you given and they have come out with 540 pages and they have submitted to the report to the library of congress and alice american library information society like that so with this background Karnataka Library Association also has chosen this topic. In this context, we have chosen a topic, a new direction for library and information science education. On behalf of Kala, I welcome Professor T. D. Kempra sir and Chris Ko. And now I would like to a uh, today's key speak keynote speaker is Professor T. D. Kempra sir. I think there is no introduction is required, but. still as a international audience they wanted to know about some of the uh, key features of professor td kempraj sir professor kempraj sir he obtained mlsc from mysore university and phd from bangalore university he has 35 35 years of teaching experience and his area of specialization is information system services and human resource development information service and he has published 48 more than 50 articles in national and international journals and has guided four phds and uh, six phds on progress presently is a bangalore north university vice chancellor and uh, served as a former registrar of mangalore university and director of correspondence and distance education bangalore university former director of planning monitor and evaluation work like that it goes on 20 30 pages so with this short introduction now i invite professor kempraj sir to deliver a keynote 
address. Over to Professor Kempraj. Okay, thank you, Krishna uh, Murthy. Good morning to all of my LAS fraternity friends. Professor Rasundi. Do you have a PPT, sir? Dilayla, uh, extend forward. Uh, Dr. Krishnamurthy, Professor Rasundi, Professor Christopher, uh, our good colleague uh, Dr. Meera, and other learned LIS uh, professional colleagues representing different states as well as uh, from other countries also. At the outset, I congratulate the office bearers of the Kala for initiating this kind of very meaningful webinar programs. As I mentioned by Professor Sundi, the science series, and I hope that such kind of active programs will going to be continued in the days to come. And Allah will be always in the to carry the, the spirit of life and information service profession and also to resolve many of the issues. So, friends, uh, the webinar programs are very popularly going on across the world. In every profession, though there is a lack of opportunity to physically meet and discuss many of the vital issues in every profession, meeting virtually, exchanging their views, exchanging their ideas, and also gaining a lot of professional advantage of what's happening. So friends, uh, we all of us know that we are living in the age of crisis. COVID-19 or Corona pandemic has created a new shock. Not only in the whole world. I recollect the day when I was a BLC student, our, our teachers used to tell me a future shock. I could not be able to complete the whole book, but I could be able to read a part of the book. And I was and during that time as a student, I was finding difficulties. What really the shock? We never experienced any kind of a shocks. Now we have experienced what is the type of shocks will be there. And it is a time of a shock, time of crisis. As a result of COVID-19. In the last months, and uh, many countries across the world during the last six to eight months, they have terrified by the impact of COVID-19. One way, the societal life has started. All professional programs and activities uh, has totally stopped. The last what we all experienced. But slowly, Many of the countries could able to recover from the shock of COVID. India too successfully able to combat with COVID. We have to congratulate the our governments, the government as well as the respective state governments for their to combat with COVID-19 and also the people participation in response to the government call or government directions to take care of COVID-19. So like that, the impact of COVID-19 is really a great and also the library and information service profession is not an exception. Because any sector for their progress and prosperity they have to require the support of the government or the management. More importantly, economic support. Like that, library and information question also requires the support of the government. To strengthen the library resources, collections, and also to meet the evolving changes, aspirations, needs, demands of our users. On the other side, we have to bring in a kind of cultural change in our environment. 
not only through physical assets or virtual assets, through our delivery mechanism, treating our users within the library or remotely. All these kind of an issues has posed a serious problem for our librarians. And I know that every librarian nowadays thinking how to carry forward our mission in the coming days under this crisis environment. I just mentioned the one crisis, the one crisis. But coming days, we have to face other type of crisis, technical crisis also, environmental crisis. And we, the libraries, we are so much influenced by the other forces. But societal structure has been So the societies always used to admit that it's a quality consciousness society. Everyone wants quality. And also our library has to provide whether you're students or researchers or general public or any. And secondly, today's society is a technology driven society. Technology has penetrated every part of human life. We have reached a situation that we can't live without the support of technology. Without technology. So, COVID 19, I must. Uh, one way, thankful to COVID-19, it has created a lot of think on this line. I have a profession that is called Intensive Society. The growth and dependency of information is growing much among the users. And also in India, the economy is also based on information. The libraries are also part of that. These are the, some of the societal characters what we have seen. There are also vibrant changes which are happening in the last 10 years in the library and information profession also. Technology is a striking for the current changes. Technology will go, is going to become a much more striking force in the future changes also. However, libraries simply are successfully adopting all the ICTs in library and information services. Many of the scientific studies have shown that the users, particularly younger generation users, our demography of India shows that by 2025, nearly about 58% of the Indian population belongs to an age group of 18 to 28 years. So the larger percentage of library users in the coming days will be the younger generation users. They're actually the very unique population. It has been shown that their learning and such other activities is strongly influenced by the digital world. Hence, their learning process and methodology accordingly their approach to use library, accordingly their expectation from the libraries are different. The future users are more of technology digital savvy and more aggressive. As I mentioned, the expectations are instant. No patience to wait. Instant feedback. And another growing trend is that low-level interest in using the increasing use of library through technology. They want to enter into the physical travel. The physical use. To some extent, the faculty, even though the web in support of the, the next generation services 
has to take care of support, access, and creation of We have to provide success in our libraries. Also, periodically, we have to plan to offer user development, user training programs, and information literacy effectiveness, effective market services to all group of potential users. And more importantly, we have to integrate the physical spaces and services. Community building is also another important and as a result of these kinds of situations happening in the environment of users, and we the librarians in the coming days, all these kinds of crisis, and definitely it is very difficult to expect a good support, funding support for libraries, and the environment will be different. More from the library. Our responsibility and has the role of libraries resources at no cost of time and no cost of opportunity. These are all the very vital issues for us. Hence, there is a need to and at this these kind of challenges. What are the directions are available? What are the positive directions? The future challenges and opportunities are quite open, visible also to us. Google has put a great challenge for the existence of a lot of us. This localism and technology is a beneficial part of promoting these libraries. Google on the other side is a threat for library use. Their every libraries, their credibility, their performance and activities is so much influenced by the Google. So the libraries and librarians have to explore pragmatic ways, introduce emerging new smart technologies, innovative methods, meet the users' needs through its services as well as the facilities. On the other side, a changing shift from print to digital media, the emergence of new forms of resources, particularly the digital content, adopting the digitalization of new services, develop new services to meet the existing and future needs of our users. So the ascent on increase in interest in the use of digital document and resources, apart from the advantages of digital technology, the new directions in which we have to explore and the role of the along with the emergence of many fold challenges. And I mentioned on the other side, there are also opportunities. Predict and appropriate strategies we have to devise are effective and also prioritize ourselves. Strategies acquired through our funding. Explore the avenues of resources. Platforms for multi layered and multi faceted information. And if users want to use the library through their social media, effective utilization of social media for information services. The academic sectors and is about the promotion and use of massive open online courses, optimum utilization of open source software, 
engaged to get more and more of this and capacity building for vibrant information professionals as per the changing situation of our life learning information service provision so like that today wider debate is going on so how we we are supposed to move in the coming days like we mentioned we like the information service also we have our own purpose we have our own vision we have our own mission but we have to carry forward and the time of this crisis it is very essential to take note of all this but the days is definitely a very hard days challenging days critical days for all professions and many of the experts have reported that country has already went back for 5 years in all sectors socially economically culturally individually back for 5 years and in this competitive environment there of course is a meeting of youth expectations at the time of crisis it will be a whole economic social political trade business as we are in our situation like right to think we to have a, a greater gate of challenges and there is also a great greater opportunities we are all listening from our national leaders particularly in the field of education there is a new trend a new wave has emerged in the process as becoming a point of and in the days to come where the academic library and also the public libraries they have to have a very supporting role for academic environment the responsibility has been going to increase a lot we need to talk of media and to the knowledge society the libraries too have the responsibility and role to play in the transformation in the academic and other type of libraries are required to redesign their programs we have to re develop our procedures we have to develop new tools and techniques in various library works and services and we are all confident that the technologies in the coming days will going to bring out a lot of dividends advantages to carry forward our library works and services in a more effective way the emergence of smarter technologies new format of information resources intensive use of digital resources innovative technologies and its use to provide access provision are the most compelling factors and challenges for our library profession lis professionals have to upgrade their knowledge their skill base it is a continuous process i am not telling that for tomorrow we have to upgrade upgradation of knowledge upgradation of our competencies our skills our positive attitude leadership quality analytical thinking problem solving ability these are all the continuous every time we have to upgrade and also learn and also develop a new skill base in addition to developing information literacy skills so dear colleagues changes challenges and opportunities they always be there it is not only this crisis this crisis is a different kind of a crisis but since early days in the in the last 20 years three decades four decades we have come across a different type of low level crisis but today's crisis environment is totally different so changes challenges opportunities will remain to stay but the life must change libraries must change change to perform change to travel for a so like that a number of opportunities challenges we have to devise our action plan for our libraries 
otherwise for our library fraternities right we have to reposition ourselves in the we have to redefine our role once again under the crisis environment and also the library is definitely going through a social infrastructure as well as the diversification added to all these things definitely there's a high scope for expanding and promoting the use of library resources by redesigning our programs and as well as the activities so i hope that our librarians will have a great great challenges to convince your administration your authorities and also the library associations also play a very important role in bringing to the notice of the concerned governments for supporting the crisis at the time of this crisis and so all these things the library and information science education as the title says the new direction for library services library work and also education understand that is the lis education education sector that we have discussed yesterday in the chance to conclude and synthesize the vital issues has been cropped up and schools once again have to play a different role to respond to the market needs of still the debate is going on and what the market is expecting and we have to take note of the market needs the knowledge the skill sets the abilities competencies and accordingly we have to reshape the programs strengthen our curriculum teaching pedagogy and also to develop other set of skills such as the communication skills analytical abilities etc these are all the vital issues where lis education has to take a note of change in the area of our library and information profession so i don't want to take much more time because christopher is waiting to the what to be the future directions to carry forward and one thing is clear that future days no doubt brighter days equally challenging days for all these kinds of challenges through our progressive thinking and also through our proactive role in developing our profession in this right direction i once again thankful to the organizers of kala and i hope that you will going to enjoy a lot from christopher and carry out a lot of messages for your working stations and implement and let us see the brighter days of indian library thank you thank you very much sundee krishnamurthy meera for everybody thank you sir hello friends hello can you hear me okay uh, the next speaker is chris ku chris ku is an associate professor in the v kim v school of communication and information division of information studies at the nayantang technological university singapore where he teaches courses in knowledge organization information architecture data mining and web based information system he obtained his phd at chirakas university in 1997 his msc in library and information science at the university of illinois urbana champaign in 1987 and a ba bachelor of arts from harvard university he has also worked for several years as a science reference librarian cataloger and online information searcher at the national university of singapore library his main research interests are knowledge organization 
ontology, automatic sentiment categorization, human categorization behavior, natural language processing, information extraction, multi-document summarization, and clinical decision support system. And there's done a lot of projects, uh, namely argument and information structures in research paper, evidence-based teaching, literature review writing, modeling clinical interaction with a clinical direction support system for wound management and early recognition of decision of system. And uh, yes, published many articles in the reputed journals, how users organize electronic files from their workstation, personally information behavior in the information research and the uh, potential prospect of taxonomies like that. And uh, last year, I met in Taipei in one of the international conference uh, uh, coup. Uh, actually, uh, when I last week and I called him, Sir Kala would like to invite you immediately is accepted. And uh, on behalf of Kala and on behalf of our uh, Karnataka and the Indian uh, library profession, I welcome uh, Professor Ku to deliver a lecture. Over to Chris Ku. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Krishna Murti. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Okay, good. Yeah. So uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Krishna Murti and also Kala uh, uh, officers, uh, your organizing committee, for inviting me. Uh, this is a topic uh, that's close to my heart, and and I think it's close to all our hearts, right? We are seeking new directions for the field, uh, for our libraries and for library education. I also want to thank uh, Vice Chancellor uh, uh, Kemparaj uh, for his advice to us and his encouragement. Now, I was afraid that the internet connection and the audio <laughs> may not be very good. So last night, I did a video uh, a recording of my talk uh, so, so that uh, Dr. Krishnamurti can, can play the, the Vika rather than from Singapore. Okay, so uh, if you don't mind, I'll ask uh, uh, Dr. Asundi or Dr. Krishnamurti to play the video recording. And then after that, uh, we can have, uh, you know, maybe some fruitful uh, interaction uh, and dialogue. Okay, Professor. Issue. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you.
ವಿಷ್ಣುಮೂರ್ತಿ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಚೆಕ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಹೇಳಿ ಹಲೋ ಹೇಳ್ರಿ ಡಿ ಸರ್ ನೀವು ಶೇರ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಶೇರ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಸರ್ ನೋಡೋಣ ನೀವು ಶೇರ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಮಾಡ್ತಿರ್ತಾರೆ users don't appreciate what we do uh we know many things but always seem to be playing catch up we are, we are never ahead of the curve <laughs> uh wait a minute this role is under threat from the world wide web uh, most people are now going to the website now it is shared hello ready Google, uh, ready to, to look for information rather than go ready sir ah uh, sir sir sound is playing sir sound is playing okay, sir now playing okay now okay. share madidini iga okay sir okay sir iga inna hing maadi okay restart from the beginning ready talk is similar to ready ready okay sir okay sir restart from the beginning okay okay, okay sir now okay, we can okay, restart okay sir uh, we're not at a conference sir sir sound is playing sir sound is playing now playing okay now everybody okay okay now it's fine now it is going on okay the kandataka has a long rich history and culture and i believe that you must have a well developed uh, library system Uh now uh before I begin uh allow me to give you a short uh, introduction to my school. Uh this slide has uh, the two pictures of the front of my school and the school is called uh Wikimwi School of Communication and Information. Now Wikimwi was the uh former president of Singapore uh, who was a journalist profession. So uh this school has a mass community ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಅನ್ಮೂಟ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಹೇಳಿ ಓಕೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇದು ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ನಾನು ಅನ್ಮೂಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೇನೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಓಕೆ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಗ್ರಾಜ್ಯುಯೇಟ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಕೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಎಂ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಶನ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಸ್ ಎಂ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಂ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಶನ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ದ ಅಂಡರ್ ಗ್ರಾಜ್ಯುಯೇಟ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಸ್ ಕರೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಐ ಟೀಚ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ which is uh, training uh, information professionals to work in the private sector to work in in a corporate uh, environments uh, but i also teach in a communication studies undergraduate program uh, so you can see that this school is uh, multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary okay so new directions for lis uh we can all agree that libraries librarians and lii schools 
are all at the crossroads. Uh, we have to chart new directions uh, for our profession. Uh, in our current environment, we are bombarded by these buzzwords and trends. We have big data, we have uh, ubiquitous computing, uh, Internet of Things, uh, AI, open access, web 4.0, fourth industrial revolution, blockchain, smart city and smart nation, and others. And in the past uh, a few months, we also have COVID-19. <laughs> so uh, the question is, uh, are libraries relevant uh, uh, to all these uh, uh, trends? Uh, are librarians uh, uh, participating or even uh, playing a leading role in any of these uh, initiatives? Uh, is any library uh, you know, participating in the COVID-19 uh, fight? Um, so we have to uh, ask these questions, uh, you know, whether libra uh, libraries and librarians are uh, relevant you know, to all these uh, major developments uh, in industry. I can see two uh, things that uh, libraries are participating in. Uh, I know that libraries are working with big data, okay, maybe not all of big data, uh, but certainly they are applying uh, data analytics to our library data. Uh, many academic libraries have embarked on data management and building data repositories. Okay, so I think we are doing some things uh, in the area of big data. In the area of open access, uh, I think librarians are doing very well. I think we are champions of uh, open access. Now for the others, I think we are, I'm, I don't think we are, are doing uh, much okay, in these uh, other areas. So we scored 2 out of uh, 10, so 20%. So is that good enough? Um, I think that libraries and librarians are under threat uh, from many directions. Mm. Uh, we do many things. Uh, some people think that we do too many things. Okay? We are stretched very thin. We are you know, try, we are scrambling, trying to uh, participate in all sorts of new, you know, new tasks and new trends. Uh, but maybe uh, users don't appreciate what we do. Uh, we know many things, but always seem to be playing catch up. We are, we are never ahead of the curve. Uh, we are many things, we play many roles, uh, but users don't seem to know and don't care. So where are the threats uh, coming from? Uh, I thought it would be useful to look at uh, traditional functions of libraries and librarians and, and look at the, the threats that are you know, attacking us. Okay? Uh, one traditional function, or at least a perception of libraries, is libraries as repositories of books and information. Okay, we know that this, is, uh, this role is under threat from the World Wide Web. Uh, most people are now going to their websites, to uh, Google Books, uh, to, to look for information rather than going to the uh, friendly librarian. Uh, they search for books in Google Books because it, it has full text indexing. You can search for words in these uh, books, but whereas you cannot do it in the library catalog. Uh, another threat to the idea of libraries as repositories is open access uh, and related terms like open source, open courseware. Uh, okay, in this area, I think librarians are doing well. We are championing open access. Uh, libraries are developing open access institutional repositories, uh, especially uh, uh, in the university libraries. Um, University libraries are also acting as open access publishers, uh, publishing open access journals and so on. Uh, the next uh, traditional function of a library would be the library catalog system and uh, the effort of cataloging to create library records. Okay, this is an area that's close to my heart uh, because uh, I was a librarian and I still consider myself a librarian and I was a cataloger. Okay, so cataloging is close to my heart. 
Uh, but I think library catalogs are being challenged uh, by online bookseller sites like Amazon. Uh, I think that people are looking for books in Amazon rather than in the library catalog. Because in Amazon and other bookseller sites, there are consumer reviews and ratings. Uh, there is collaborative filtering and recommender functions, uh, which is to say that uh, if you buy a book, uh, Amazon will tell you that customers who bought this book also bought these other books. Or if you look at one book, uh, Amazon will say, ah, the other customers who were interested in this book also, you know, were interested in these uh, related books. So, I think that users find these reviews, ratings, and social tags in Amazon to be more useful than subject headings and classification numbers. However, as a librarian, uh, I must say that when I go to Amazon, I, I, feel, uh, I feel dissatisfied. You know, I, I actually have trouble finding uh, books in, in Amazon since I'm, I'm familiar with library catalogs. And after searching for books at Amazon, I often find myself going back to the library catalog. And I would go to the Library of Congress or, or, or WorldCat, you know, some big uh, library catalog to search for books. Uh, in public libraries, there, there is a reader's advisory services uh, to give uh, users advice on what books to borrow and what books to read. Uh, but I think that's a big challenge uh, from social media sites. Uh, for example, Goodreads you know, is very good, uh, you know, uh, especially for fiction books. Uh, it, provides, uh, it offers social cataloging for users, consumer reviews, and social networking. And I w I'm pretty impressed by the reviews that you find in Goodreads because the reviews are done by users uh, who have actually read the books, you know, and they have uh, uh, analyzed it pretty thoughtfully. Whereas if you go to the library and get advice from the librarians, the librarians have not read the book, okay? But here you have, you know, uh, uh, detailed advice uh, from people who have read the books. In the university libraries, you have uh, reference librarians, uh, and you have uh, information intermediaries and online searchers who do uh, online searching in databases on behalf of users. But now users want to do the, the searching themselves, right? using Google Scholar uh, and accessing also digital libraries. Uh, there are also uh, AI chat box and uh, intelligent agents, of course, these are not as, uh, you know, as intelligent as reference librarians, uh, but they are available all the time. Oh, and then there's Wikipedia. Even librarians are using Wikipedia, you know, to get fast uh, facts. And uh, I believe all of us, even uh, academics, okay, are look looking up uh, Wikipedia for uh, quick uh, information. Social media sites, especially online discussion forums and social question and answer sites, uh, allow users to post questions and get responses from other users. Okay, and the nice thing with these uh, social media sites is that you can get responses from experts. You know? So uh, why would you go and ask a reference librarian who has to look up some book? You can ask an expert uh, uh, immediately. And also in social media sites, you, al you also have uh, busybody uh, users <laughs> who will do the, the, you know, the, the, the reference search, you know, who will uh, search for information, collate them, synthesize them, post it, you know, post the, uh, uh, their, their work in response to uh, questions. So people are taking over the librarian's roles, you know, the librarian's tasks. Now, uh, all over the world, there are many conferences and seminars on the future of libraries okay, and directions for uh, future libraries. Uh, in the US and Canada, uh, some five years ago, uh, there were a series of seminars on the future of libraries. And in the end, uh, it involved uh, 250 uh, library managers. Uh, Ken Haycock in 2016 uh, summarized you know, the, the outcome of these 
seminars. Okay? And he summarized the questions that were raised. Uh, what is the mission of the library that is unique, achievable, and contribute to the community? Because uh, libraries now are taking on all sorts of functions, you know, and it's like it, its brand is, is, is not clear anymore. Okay? And, and many of the tasks that are done by li you know, libraries uh, can be done by other people and are being done by other uh, agencies. So what is the library space? What library services are not duplicated more cheaply by others? What is the library brand? Uh, I think these three questions are related. And then the fourth one is which organizations and communities should the library collaborate with and for what purpose? And finally, how should the culture of librarians be changed? And you notice that I have highlighted this in red <laughs> because this is something that I'm personally uh, concerned about. Eh? Uh, there is a, a prevailing sense that uh, the, the uh, librarian culture and mindset uh, is, uh, I was going to say dysfunctional, <laughs> but you may be offended by that. Uh, I would say that maybe it is not so useful uh, going forward uh, into the future. So we need to change our way of thinking uh, and our mindset. And actually quite a, quite a lot of my talk here is, is about the, the, the mindset and thinking of librarians. Yeah. IFLA <coughs> also did a global survey. Uh, they asked the uh, library associations of all the member countries to, to survey the members to come up with a vision uh, for libraries. So they came up with challenges and opportunities uh, facing libraries. Okay. And this is a summary of the 10 uh, highlights of values uh, of libraries and 10 uh, opportunities. Okay. So uh, they look reasonable here. The number one is provide equal and free access to knowledge. Okay, good. And then supporting literacy, learning, and reading. Okay, and then I thought that you know these. Okay, in red here is my addition that we should include thinking, writing, and uh, presentation. A uh, focus on user needs. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Digital innovation, advocacy, okay? uh, opportunities. Uh, be champions of intellectual freedom. Uh, upgrading our roles in the digital age. Uh, partnering with other uh, agencies. Uh, technological changes. Yeah. Okay, so these are, I think, uh, 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 what one what one would expect. Okay, they make sense. Yeah. Okay, here there are a few that uh, that address the, the the culture side, okay, of libraries and librarians. It says here, be less bureaucratic, be less <coughs> inflexible and resistant to change, be proactive and open to innovation. Okay, this is uh, a comment from librarians, okay, not just me. <laughs> and then it says here, overcome passive mindset and embrace innovation and change. Okay? And then I added this myself, uh, maybe comfort with uncertainty and ambiguity. Okay, okay so these are top 10 and uh, highlights and top 10 opportunities. So IFLA also, to continue this work, launch a global vision idea store. They are inviting uh, ideas for the future of libraries from librarians all over uh, the world. So I looked at this a few days ago. I think they have done a marvelous job in collating all these ideas. However, when I look at these ideas, I find that um, uh, the, the ideas are kind of broad. Okay, They are not very specific. But at the same time, they are not broad enough uh, to provide a vision, you know, there are many, many ideas, uh, but no uh, visionary, you know, uh, uh, statements uh, for librarians, uh, for libraries, uh, you know, to pursue. Uh, JSS, the Journal of the Association for Information Science and Technology, is planning a special issue on paradigm shift in information research. And uh, the, the guest editors who are listed here uh, did an online survey on the future of information research. Mm. The deadline for submission is in July, so you can still uh, submit a paper this. 
Okay, now for my ideas eh, for directions uh, for the future. Uh, I think that the, the future is bright uh, for libraries and for librarians. Uh, if we can go beyond our traditional uh, library space, our traditional boundaries and roles. Eh, so we must go beyond uh, what we are doing now. <coughs> we have to uh, expand our conceptions and ideas of what a librarian is, uh, what roles librarians play, and what competencies uh, librarians uh, should have, and what service a library should provide, and how to provide uh, those services. And uh, above all, uh, we need to change our culture and mindset. Okay, these are very general uh, uh, comments, right? It doesn't mean anything. So let me try to be more uh, specific. <coughs> uh, okay, IFLA uh, from their uh, survey has come up with this. Uh, libraries and librarians should be less bureaucratic and flexible, challenge current structures and behaviors, overcome our passive mindset, and embracing innovation and change. Now, I have come up with uh, what I call five paradigm shifts uh, to our idea or our conception of libraries and librarians. Okay. First, uh, I would say that we should focus on information content rather than the information container. Okay. Uh, secondly, focus on information use rather than information needs. Uh, thirdly, librarian as scholar or researcher rather than librarian as intermediary. Fourth, uh, information linking and synthesis rather than providing information. The librarian rather than the library. Okay, so I consider these uh, to be uh, five uh, paradigm shifts uh, to the, the, our conception of libraries and librarians and our conception of the kind of services uh, that libraries uh, should provide. Okay, let me go through each of uh, these in more uh, detail. Okay, this is a traditional focus of libraries. The focus on books, journals, and uh, on documents. And even when we have digital libraries, we are focusing on documents, right? Uh, and our focus is on helping users to use these digital libraries to find relevant documents. Okay, I think this is old stuff. Okay, we should change our focus to the content of these books and documents. We should focus on the information and knowledge content of these documents rather than on the documents themselves and help users to find information rather than books. Um, the next focus, the traditional focus, is on information needs. Uh, all libraries have done information needs uh, surveys to find out what are the information needs of their users, uh, what are the preferred information sources. Okay, So that's old stuff. I'm suggesting that let's forget about information needs because we really can't know our users' information needs in detail. Right? So when we do a survey, it's rather superficial. Uh, information needs. We should instead focus on information use. Mm -hmm. Let's help our users to use information properly to uh, make decisions, to learn, you know, and, and so on. Okay. Uh, the traditional focus is on librarian as intermediary. Okay. So the go between, be go between the user and the knowledge or information. But an intermediary has a, a second class, you know, it's not seen as a high profile kind of role. So we should see, uh, we should focus on librarians or perceive librarians as scholars and researchers, okay, rather than just the intermediary or go between. Uh, academic librarians need to be researchers and teachers themselves. Mm. One good model to follow in this respect is this idea of embedded library service. Mm. And uh, the uh, best example is in the area of evidence-based uh, medicine. So in evi uh, evidence-based medicine, 
uh, clinical librarians support clinical teams in systematic searching of multiple medical databases. But not only that, they don't just do online searching, but they also appraise, they evaluate the evidence, and they help to uh, synthesize the evidence, they support systematic uh, reviews. So this is, I think, a good uh, model to follow. Another model which is related is the idea of uh, informationist or blended librarian. An informationist uh, is a librarian that combines uh, two areas of expertise, so library science plus something else, maybe medicine or science. Mm -hmm. A blended librarian has multiple skill sets mm -hmm. and can be playing uh, multiple roles. So I think this is a like a new breed of librarian, right? You know, and, and this kind of librarian needs a lot of training and a lot of experience, uh, and should be paid a lot too. Okay, another traditional uh, conceptual focus is uh, information and document provision. Okay, of course, uh, we sh uh, libraries always have to provide information and, and documents to users, uh, but I suggest that we should add to that uh, to also focus on information linking okay, and, uh, and knowledge synthesis, synthesizing information. And, uh, and this is related, I think, to uh, information use because when you're using information, uh, you need to link it and relate it to other pieces of information. So there's information integration uh, involved. Okay? You have to relate information to the task or a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, information linking and synthesis is also found in learning, writing, problem solving. <laughs> So academic librarians can help uh, uh, students in doing this and even help faculty in doing this, helping them to use information uh, and link information and synthesize uh, into uh, what I say here, a coherent uh, knowledge structure, which means uh, learning something you know, uh, or writing something okay, that involves synthesizing information into a coherent knowledge structure. Uh, there is a traditional focus on libraries. Okay? Uh, I know that when I attend an international conference, uh, at the end of the or after the conference, there will be library tours, you know, to visit various libraries. I must tell you that I always skip all these libraries. I tell my friends, you know, every library is the same. <laughs> okay, of course I'm joking, uh, but I think there should be a, a change in emphasis to librarians rather than the libraries. Okay? But I already see this trend because many libraries actually uh, highlight the expertise uh, of their uh, librarians. Okay, I want to s uh, uh, combine all these ideas okay, into uh, a statement of mission for the libraries. So this is my proposed new mission for libraries and librarians, uh, which is linking data, ideas, uh, people and tools to support learning and co-creation of knowledge. So there are two parts. The first part is linking data, ideas, people and tools and the second part is the purpose of doing that to support learning and creation of knowledge. So uh, in terms of linking data, ideas and people, uh, we are familiar with many of these technologies already. For linking data, we have linked data you know, technologies, we have big data technologies. Uh, for semantic knowledge, we have the semantic web or ontologies, and then we have linking documents. Okay, we have hyperlinks mm -hmm. in in the World Wide Web. We also have recommender, you know, applications in Amazon. For linking people, we have social media and social networking and so on. Mm -hmm. So we are already making use of these technologies, and of course, uh, we should improve our expertise in these. But above that, we should also be looking at linking these different types of things. We should link data to, you know, if we link up data, we can form new knowledge. Okay, so there will be like the ontology or semantic web. Uh, we should link data to documents, data to people, right? So there's linking among, you know, uh, across all these different categories of, of entities. We have to do integration, synthesis, networking, summarizing. So those are part of linking. 
and then we do these to support user learning and knowledge creation and we are familiar with or we are exploring some of these technologies already I know that librarians are exploring uh, visualization tools uh, text summarization tools hmm? so these are for exploratory learning and then there are research and analytic tools like uh, data mining, text mining, uh, social network analysis and we have knowledge organization and synthesis tools like creating ontology, metadata, social tagging and so on hmm? so we are already uh, you know, uh, exploring these tools and over the next few years we need to gain expertise you know, uh, so that uh, we can uh, fulfill you know, this new uh, uh, mission of libraries that, <laughs> that I'm uh, proposing to support user learning and knowledge creation okay. so what are the implications for LIS uh, education I think that library schools uh, need to lead the way yeah? Uh, libraries and librarians by themselves uh, cannot you know uh, uh, embark on these new directions and, and be successful we need uh, guidance and research from library schools and also uh, continuing education and uh, training mm -hmm. so LIS schools I believe should develop new directions for libraries and uh, librarians okay, and lead the change uh, and uh, when we develop these new directions uh, of course it shouldn't be something that's totally new uh, it should be like a, a natural extension of uh, traditional expertise okay so I myself uh, as a faculty of a library school uh, I'm very mindful of this and there are three types of new services that I'm trying to develop now for my students uh, I realized that my students and former students uh, need uh, uh, guidance uh, in terms of developing new services uh, that they, they are not doing now uh, so uh, the first area is uh, I used to be an information retrieval uh, researcher okay, but now my focus is on text mining because I'm focusing on the content of the documents okay. but uh, we do have a course in text mining uh, but text mining is a very broad area okay? so if I offer a course in text mining I have to teach students all sorts of things and at the end of the course they still don't know what to do to help the, you know, the, the library or the organization they are working in so I'm focusing on uh, these uh, two aspects of text mining one is information extraction from documents okay? uh, and the second one is uh, sentiment analysis uh, of uh, text especially social media uh, post okay. so I'm developing these uh, uh, two uh, uh, methodologies uh, to teach my students so that when they go to whatever organization is they can tell their boss okay we, we should do it this way okay we should extract information uh, from documents because I know that uh, many organizations have amassed uh, big uh, enterprise portals or institutional repositories with lots of documents, lots of reports but reports are just sitting there nobody is you know, pulling out uh, uh, lessons from you know, previous projects or previous reports uh, they don't know how to search for it okay? so by doing text mining especially information extraction we're going to pull out the good stuff uh, from these uh, institutional repositories Okay, in the area of information literacy and scholarly communication, I'm developing some uh, tools to help librarians to go beyond just teaching uh, citation formatting and, uh, and, and online database searching. Okay? So I think uh, librarians should go on to teach students how to do literature review writing, you know? how to make use of information in the cited papers in the literature review or in the uh, academic report hmm? now I know that uh, in the area of academic writing most universities already have an academic writing department you know or a linguistics or language you know department to teach academic writing but I think that librarians can also do it you know can also approach academic writing but more from an information use perspective rather than from a language or linguistics 
uh, kind of perspective. Now a third area that I'm working on is uh, developing research interfaces to repositories and portals and this is related to uh, knowledge organization and I teach this actually in my knowledge organization class. Okay, what I do is I focus now on ontology and of course I have to include metadata and uh, you know RDF and so on okay but my focus is on ontology construction uh, but then how to make use of ontology so I teach them about knowledge graphs and graph database and uh, using a visualization tool okay so I have to teach them how to apply ontology okay to uh, all the way to uh, designing the, the the interface so that users uh, can uh, make good use of these uh, ontologies and uh, knowledge graphs okay so these are three types of services that I'm working on right now and I hope to have something uh, concrete uh, by the end of the year. Okay, as example of these uh, three types of services, uh, this project is a text mining project uh, that's uh, co a collaboration with the Singapore State Courts. Okay? So in the State Courts they have lots of documents of course and one type of document is the charge sheets, the police charge sheets. So uh, when somebody is arrested, the police have to make out a charge sheet okay, to accuse them of one crime or another. Okay. So as a start, as a first uh, uh, collaborative project, uh, we focus on charge sheets involving theft, you know, stealing of things, but also including embezzlement. You know. And uh, what I'm doing here is, or what I did here, is to develop an uh, information extraction method to extract pieces of information from these chart sheets. Mm -hmm. So this is an example of a chart sheet and uh, uh, I'm sorry it's, it's quite blurred, it's, you know, it's not easy to read. Uh, what the text here says is that uh, you are charged uh, on the 19 November uh, at about 12 uh, p.m. at uh, Victoria Street uh, at Cold Storage which is a well-known supermarket chain uh, you committed theft of the following items one bag of Lavazza coffee powder uh, valued at uh, I think it's $36 and then another bag of you know okay you get the idea so from this kind of chart sheet uh, I wrote a Python uh, program to extract information uh, to fill in a template like this so the, the organization is cold storage okay so this is the venue where the theft occurred uh, the victim's name is this, the date of incident is this. Uh, the item that was stolen is Lavazza coffee powder, okay, and there were two items stolen, and these are the values, okay, and so on. Okay. So this is information extraction. Of course, this document is quite short and quite simple, okay, and uh, the information extraction method that I developed has to be applicable to a bigger, you know, and, and longer uh, documents as well so I'm uh, working on it uh, right now. Now based on this extracted information we can do various things with it. Okay, For example I had a student who developed this uh, visualization uh, uh, a tool uh, to indicate where the crimes are, are, are being committed so where are the thefts you know happening okay, on, on the map. Uh, another uh, application is to relate these uh, information to the sentences, you know. And uh, in this particular example, I'm we are relating things like the total amount stolen to the the jail term, you know, how many years, you know, the 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 person the accused was in prison, okay? and and the number of unique items. So in the end, I found that if you multiply the total amount involved in the theft and the number of items then this uh, value will have a correlation of 0.61 uh, with the, the jail term, how long the jail term is. Is it one week, you know, one month, or one year? Mm -hmm. So this is not bad. Okay? This is quite a, a high uh, correlation. Mm -hmm. Okay, another, uh, the second kind of uh, a service that I'm uh, developing is focus on ontologies. Right? Okay, the background to this is that current AI artificial intelligence applications are data driven okay? but AI researchers know that the future is in combining data driven AI with semantic AI meaning 
ontologies. They know that already <laughs> because uh, these some of these researchers have approached me, you know, to collaborate with them to develop, uh, you know, to explore how ontologies can improve uh, AI uh, performance. So ontology is needed to support symbolic or semantic AI, you know, AI that can do reasoning, that can, you know, that makes use of, uh, that can uh, process meaning. Okay? Ontologies are also needed in IoT, you know, Internet of Things, to organize all these gadgets, you know, that are on the internet. And certainly, ontologies are needed in di digital humanities. Okay? And uh, I think uh, librarians all over the world are already collaborating with humanities researchers in this area of digital. Uh, humanities. Uh, I have a, I had a PhD student who just graduated last year. Uh, she developed an ontology to support reuse of data, yeah, or rather data sets in uh, the data repository. Okay. So uh, she found that researchers have difficulty understanding data sets in the repository, so therefore they don't use them. Okay. So how do you uh, develop an ontology and visualization method? to help her researchers to make sense of data sets in the data repository. So uh, she made use of Neo4j, a graph database, to store this ontology and a graphical visualization tool. She used a cytoscape, although now I'm moving towards a new product called uh, Keylines. <coughs> and this is an example of a, a graphical visualization of a data set. So these are variables in the data set okay and this hp is hypothesis in the research you know where the data set was used okay. and in this diagram you see that uh, there is graphical visualization here but there's also text explaining all these variables in the data set i think these are questionnaire items you know uh, from which the data uh, came from okay. and then uh, you can see an overview of all the the data that uh, uh, available. So this kind of graphical visualization is not easy to to design. You know, you can see that it's uh, right now it's still not very usable. Okay? So I think there's scope for librarians here to design and develop these uh, uh, visualizations uh, to help users to make sense of what is in the digital library or in the data repository. Okay, okay so the the third. Uh, 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 type of service that I'm developing is an in information literacy and scholarly communication. So uh, I say that we need to strengthen teaching and research expertise and teach literature review writing and academic writing. Okay. We need to teach our students uh, in the university library how to analyze, evaluate, integrate and use information effectively in their writing. Okay. But uh, if you're working in a corporate organization, you have to uh, teach users to use information in decision making and knowledge creation. Okay, and my latest PhD student who just graduated uh, analyzed uh, academic writings or rather research articles to model the argument and information structure in the research paper. So the argument structure and the information structure. So first she analyzed the arguments as you know, an argument claim with a supporting argument. Okay? And then link all the argument claims and supporting arguments into an argument structure. Okay? Uh, we used uh, 27 types of argument claims, like there is a research gap, uh, there's a good research objective, there is a research result. Okay, So we consider these to be argument claims. And then we look for argument patterns uh, in these uh, research papers. Then she went on to analyze the information structure. What are the types of information uh, found in these uh, research papers? And how are they related to the arguments? You know, how do arguments make use of information, different types of information? Okay. So relationship between information structure and the uh, arguments okay, that the <coughs> researchers are making in the research article. So I think this is a different perspective of uh, academic writing than from a linguistic perspective. This is, I think, more a librarian perspective. Okay? So we can have a, a new way of teaching uh, academic writing. So of course, we may use our ontology okay, to model these uh, information patterns. Okay? 
So you can see uh, what I'm doing is I'm applying uh, library uh, uh, concepts and technology to other areas. You know, we cannot just wait for other people to take over to encroach in our area. <laughs> we should go forth, you know, and apply uh, library and information science theories and concepts to other areas, other fields. Okay. Hello, so thank I think you, Professor Wu. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Thank you for listening. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes, I can hear Mr. you. Who? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. There's only one, one small uh, clarification. Okay, you mentioned about the modeling the arguments, but is it doesn't uh, mean the modeling the queries? Queries and the arguments are different. Do you mean to say that? Uh, sorry, I I, I, I lost the volume. I, yeah, could you repeat your question because I lost uh, half of it. No. Can you differentiate between the argument and the query? And the query. Okay, here. Yeah, uh, query since, and arguments are synonymous or different. Uh, you're talking about uh, search query. Yeah. Uh, you you just mentioned about modeling arguments. One mm -hmm. of the student is doing. Uh, modeling arguments okay i think equivalent to the queries modeling queries uh okay by queries i don't quite uh, uh understand what you mean uh, do you mean queries uh, that you yeah. search in a database or do you mean a research yeah, question correct, correct. yeah yeah okay yeah right. correct. yeah okay yeah. Uh, no, I'm not interested in queries. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. To me, that is old stuff. Right? <laughs> so I'm saying that we should focus. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, of course, I know uh, queries. Okay, I would say that uh, I've given up teaching uh, uh, people how to search the database. They, they, they don't want to do that, right? They, they cannot be bought. So yes, librarians still have to do it. But most of the time, uh, users are searching themselves, you know. Uh, they are not, uh, uh, yeah, getting the help of librarians. So queries is not an issue, you know. They don't care about it, right? Okay. But what I'm, what I'm trying to do is to teach once they, they download these. Now, because there are so much information out there, right? Okay. In the past, uh, uh, documents are hard to find, okay? So you need to have very careful queries. Okay? But now, you know, uh, uh, there's too much information. So... Uh, 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 researchers are not so careful in getting a comprehensive search now because there's too much. Okay. okay. So my focus is on once you get the, the relevant document, what information do you take out, you know, from these, you know, papers that you have downloaded and use in your literature review? Okay. Okay. So I have a former student, and I didn't mention it in my talk, who analyzed how uh, researchers uh, make use of these downloaded, the cited papers, what information do they extract or make use of from these cited papers? Okay. Yeah, I got so for it. example, I got it. yeah. I got right. it. I got it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Now, another question is that uh, in addition to the information literacy, okay, a lot of new literacies are being, uh, I mean, studied like media literacy, health literacy, and so on and so forth. Can the library professionals uh, would also to encroach upon these new literacies and uh, expand their professional uh, job opportunities to other areas? Uh, yes, yes. I do think that uh, these various kinds of literacies are uh, important to us. Yeah, I would say that, yeah, we should give, uh, you know, explore all these kinds of literacies. But yeah. of course, one librarian cannot do it all, right? You need to have one person <laughs> Yeah. You know, maybe focusing on information literacy. My view is that we can expand our job opportunities to know, other areas. Yeah. For example, supposing you have a media literacy, yeah. uh, for example, in, in India, we have what is called as a department of uh, information and broadcasting, where the student with a media literacy can get an employment, uh, more better employment in those areas rather than going to the, again to the library. That is what is my argument is about. Media literacy. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. Okay, uh, of course, in media literacy, uh, we are competing with a communication professional. Yeah, okay? correct, correct. So I'm aware of that because in my school, <laughs> uh, yeah. we have uh, information uh, faculty, you know, doing media literacy, and we also have communication faculty doing uh, media uh -huh. literacy. Yeah, 
So I think it's fine, you know, both, both sides are okay. But of course, mm -hmm. the information professionals will look at media literacy from a different perspective. Eh? Different. And so, yeah, I, I do agree that we should develop our perspective, maybe focusing more on the information side uh, rather than on the communication side. Eh? Uh, but, Probably you uh, will be aware yeah. of the post-truth, that is the fake news, where the analysis of the fake news can be done by the media literacy people. Uh, in my school, uh, yeah. there, there is a, a research group that is uh, researching uh, media literacy and yeah. it's a multidisciplinary group. Okay? Yeah. So I would say that we need both people you know? yeah. uh, mm -hmm. because the, the communication professionals have a very different perspective. They, they use different theories. Okay? Uh, whereas we, we, we look at more the, the, the information, okay? the, the false, whereas they look at more the, uh, the, the the motivations, you know, the, whether it's convincing or not, you know, they look at psychological factors, you know. So uh, we need both sides uh, to work That's together. Correct. I would say that the communication people would uh, look into a lot of uh, investigative ap approach, whereas uh, the information professor look for the information, what you can say, the authenticity of information, whereas the media people look for the investigative approach to any of this media. That is what uh, my perception is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly they, they look at it from a, a, from a different, different perspective. Angle. They look yeah, at the yeah. different angles. Yeah. And, and some media uh, uh, professionals may not uh, see uh, uh, information as whether it's truthful or not, you know, <laughs> because yeah. a lot of times it, it depends on, uh, you know, the, the, the subtext, you know, the, the agenda behind what, what, what you say, you know. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, different. Uh, for example, now the COVID-19 is coming up and uh, we hear a lot of controversial uh, uh, views by the different media and different channels of uh, broadcasting and like that. And mm. uh, I get uh, some kind of idea that they have a, a totally a kind of a biased view towards uh, okay, either one group or one uh, government, whereas the uh, informed profession may not look at that kind of perspective. That is what is my <laughs> argument. Okay, any, any question from audience? Any questions from audience, please? Raise your hand. Any questions? I think there is a question from Islam Sarif from Bangladesh. Yeah. I, oh, my friend. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, Sarif? Sarif? Subhasradi, can you please uh, connect to Mr. Sarif? Dr. Sarif? Yes, sir. Uh, so he please. has to unmute, unmute. He has to unmute, sir, himself. Yeah. Dr. Sarif? Uh, Professor Ku, uh, there is a question from uh, Islam Sarif. What are the roles of blended librarians? Uh, okay, I cannot answer that. Because this is a, a, a question that each blended librarian has to decide, you know, because the idea of blended librarian is quite new, you know, so it is uh, not something that and, and uh, to be a blended librarian, you need to be a, you need to have the right personality, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you need to be sociable, <laughs> be able to collaborate with people. And yeah, and you need a, a range of uh, skills, you know, a different mindset. So I would say that a blended librarian should be, uh, you know, the kind of blended librarian uh, you want to be, uh, you have to decide yourself, you know, and then you go and persuade your, your library director or your chief librarian that, you know, that uh, this is a good service uh, to do. So I would say that blended library, a lot depends on the individual librarian. So that's why I say focus on the librarian, okay? not the library, because the, okay. The, yeah, the personality and, and skills of the librarian is, is important here. Mr. Murthy, on chance, sir? Yes, sir, yes, sir, please. Yes. Uh, Mr. Uh, my point is just uh, how the libraries in Singapore have participated in supporting the COVID-19 measures taken by the government. I have to say that I have no idea. <laughs> uh, most of us are just uh, trying to adapt, right, and, and survive uh, this. So uh, I have no news uh, from the libraries. You know, they are just trying to, they, they are struggling. Uh, 
uh, just to continue uh, uh, their, their work. Okay? Because in terms of the fight uh, in you know, the COVID-19, the frontline workers, uh, I would say most of them are frontline, you know, a health professional. Okay? Uh, and the government has also enlisted various agencies to try to do some policing, you know, uh, education. You know, they go out in the streets and tell people to wear masks. You know, or maybe even find them, you know, they can find people on the spot, you know, if they don't wear a mask, you know. So I, at this stage, I don't hear anything from, from the libraries. Okay? But what I do hear is uh, the National Library has put up some uh, free online resources to entertain the public, <laughs> right? So they're making more resources available for free, okay? So that people who have to stay at home like myself, you know, can read more of the news, you know, now we can read the newspaper for free, you know, without subscribing, you know, so things like that. Okay? Uh, but for myself, I did, I did recently put up a research proposal to do information extraction from research papers on COVID-19, you know, so we know that uh, there's lots of research coming out, you know, there's so much, so many papers that are pushed out every day, so the, the health professionals and the policy makers have a hard, hard time keeping up with all these research findings. So uh, I have a team, uh, a research center uh, in the university. We put up a project to do information extraction from all these papers okay, about uh, various aspects of uh, COVID-19. So that's, uh, this is part of my, uh, uh, the, the service that I'm trying to teach my students to do information extraction from documents. You know, so now we are taking advantage of this uh, to, to start a project on extracting, you know, truth, you know, uh, correct information uh, from papers. Don't you think that uh, we the librarians, so my answer. <laughs> we the librarians somewhere failed to rise to an occasion uh, to give access to library resources and all our educational programs are virtually on. So, though the colleges are closed, though the schools are closed, though the mm. university campuses are closed physically, faculty members are involved in teaching and students who are involved in learning. Yeah. To support those two, our stakeholders, the library side, what kind of a facilities we extended virtually? We have an opportunities. Users need not come to your libraries. Here we have to carry our library to the doorstep of the users. Somewhere, in the, so I think the, our libraries have totally closed. But we have not taken the alternative measures of reaching people to even access to library content. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this, in this case of the COVID pandemic. Um, I cannot blame anybody. <laughs> we were all caught by surprise, you know. Yeah. Uh, I would tell the librarians, just stay home and be safe, you know. <laughs> yes, okay. I, uh, more than that, I'm telling the librarians that, you know, if you find that you don't have enough work now because you don't have to, you know, interact with the uh -huh. students, uh, take this time to develop new services. And I think they are doing that, okay. This is, I, I would say, an opportunity to take time out you know, because I don't think they can be very useful in the COVID-19 fight, you know, leave it to the health professionals. But take this time to run this, you know, uh, professional, continuing professional programs, like what you're doing now, right? You're taking advantage. I mean, if this wasn't COVID-19, I wouldn't agree to talk, right? <laughs> and maybe Dr. Krishnamurti wouldn't invite me, right? But <laughs> now, <laughs> but now uh, because of COVID-19, we are at home. Home, we need to be entertained. And then uh, Dr. Krishna Muji says, why don't you learn something rather than watching the movies, right? You know, so he is organizing this continued education. So I think the librarians are using this time to develop you know, a new services. You know? uh, because in the past, they are scrambling, right? I mean, they have to balance current services and there are so many things to do. They have no time to think, you know? but now they have time to think. Yeah. And I know that because some of my students in the libraries, you know, so I'm giving them some advice hey, this is the time to develop your, you know, your visualization interface, you know, develop your, your ontology <laughs> to, to improve your data repository or something. Yeah. 
So I'm sure that librarians are making good use of this time so that after, you know, maybe towards the end of COVID-19 and when the schools, uh, universities start opening up, then I'm sure, you know, they will have some uh, good, you know, new things, uh, uh, you know, uh, that they will launch. Yeah. Okay. Okay, any questions? No more questions. No more. Okay, Madam, okay. what up? Thanks. Thank you, Professor, for your nice uh, talk. And now there is a uh, what up thanks from our uh, treasurer, uh, Adi Lakshmi, Madam. Please go ahead, Madam. Thank you. Namaste to all. We have reached the last part of our today's program. That is uh, now what up thanks. And I have been assigned this work as Krishnamurti just uh, informed. Zoom has enabled Kala to organize many programs. And this has helped our library professionals very much. Zoom has enabled anyone to log in to the program from different parts of the world. Updating our knowledge and adopting technology has helped the professional to serve better in the delivery of information to the information seekers in time. Thereby we are saving the time of the clients or information seeker. We are ful fulfilling the fourth law of our library science by S. R. Ranganathan, who is the father of our library science. The law is, that is, save the time of the reader. Now we can say as clientele or information seekers by providing required information in time. Practicing librarians must deliver the required information to the seekers apart from our resources. Today we had very good topic to listen and interact with the eminent speakers. Professor Koso Gu Christopher, long name, from Singapore, and keynote speaker, Professor Kemparaju, Vice Chancellor of uh, Bangalore. <clears throat> On behalf of Kala, it's my duty to thank them. Professor Christopher has given a lot of imp inputs to all of us. <clears throat> librarians as different librarians, library professionals as different role to play. <clears throat> role to play. Yes, explained uh, in his. Uh, five paradigmas also, and Christopher's three new services and competencies, and so on. Yes, given a lot of inputs. On behalf of Kala and myself, I wholeheartedly thank Prof Professor Christopher. Thank you very much, sir. Professor Kemperajo, sorry. Professor Kemperajo. Thank you very much for bearing. <laughs> Professor Kemparajo has delivered keynote address, interacted with, uh, <clears throat> with the gathering, with the professional gatherings, and is also supporting our fellow professionals in all the activities of Kala. He, he was uh, Bangalore, uh, he was uh, already Krishnamurti has introduced. I was his student also. <laughs> I thank him wholeheartedly on behalf of Kala and myself thank you. for having made this program success. This uh, talk, speak, uh, it would have not been possible <clears throat> if uh, the president of Kala, Professor Asundi, and Professor Krishnamurti, Secretary of Kala, <clears throat> have not taken the initiative. So they are playing a very good role in organizing the programs for the benefit of library professionals. On behalf of Kala and also myself, I thank them very much. Thank you. So, Mr. Subhash Reddy, 
is playing an active role in linking one and all for this program. On behalf of Kala and on myself, I thank him very much. Thank you, madam. Participants are going to receive their e-certificate. To do this work, Maltesh and Aki has prepared the certificate very beautifully and he will be delivering shortly. On behalf of Kala and I, thank him very much. To make this program successful, participants are very important. If no participant means this uh, program would have been not successful. So on behalf of Kala and myself, I thank, well, thank them. I thank once again, thank one and all. I have been given this opportunity to conclude the program with a word of thanks. I also thank them, organizers. Thank you very much. Madam, we thank you, thank you for, yeah, thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Everyone is thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you sir, Professor Ho and uh, Professor uh, Kempraji, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you to Professor Ku. Thank you very much, Dr. Krishna Thank Murthy, you. Uh, Dr. Asundi. <laughs> yeah. One and all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so is there a nice tea uh, prepared for us after this <laughs> seminar? <laughs> Online tea. Online tea will be delivered. Online tea. Thank you. 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 Thank you.